Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to start on our aqueous equilibrium part one notes, and we're going to get into weak acids. Okay, so most ac acids are weak. What does that mean? They're only partially ionized. If you're listening today during our lecture, I said, all right, well, we have to get motivated to get in the stuff that's not weak, and we only have seven strong acids. Um, so this is what we're going to start start talking about. For a weak acid, HX. And of course, HX would look like this. It's going to have a double arrow. Um, we're going to get H plus and X minus. Now, what does that mean? That means on one side, uh, it can go either way. So it's not 100% ionized, and we know that based on the fact that we have the double arrow. We talked about the single arrows, and that's pretty easy to do. Uh, you know, 10 raised to the negative pH and uh, negative log, uh, the concentration of the H plus, we can calculate that. This is a little bit different. Um, and we have to identify what an acid dissociation constant is going to look like. And that is going to be this. All right, H plus plus X minus, or times X minus over hx so again we're going to have to be calculating these things okay so when we have a large ka value that means we have a strong weak acid so a strong weak acid if we have a small ka we have a weak <laughs> weak weak acid okay so we have a weak weak acid now we have to determine the percent ionization um, for any of these acids so we do that by percent ionization alright and that's going to equal the H plus concentration at equilibrium alright that's equilibrium over the concentration of the acid concentration of the original and that's going to be times a hundred of course right times a hundred right, let me move that little dot there times a hundred so this is H plus concentration at equilibrium over acid times original at equilibrium alright next let's talk about organic acids uh, they're going to, H was connected to O, not to C. All right, so a couple things here. We talk about formic acid, um, and you see that the C is double bonded to the O, which has a hydroxyl group on the outside. This is a carboxyl group. All right, so we got carboxyl, carbonyl. This is a hydroxyl. Um all right, carboxyl. All right. Um, in addition, what's going to happen is um, we have another one. Uh, malic acid is dicarboxylic acid, made of extreme sour taste, used in mega warheads, sour patch kids, etc. So you have to know those uh, organic acids contain only carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Uh, the donated H was connected to the O, not to the C. All right, now uh, a 0.02 molar niacin solution has a pH of 3.26. So a good question AP could ask is what percent of the acid is ionized and what is the Ka? So again, percent ionization equals H plus over the concentration of the acid. So we know from last time, and that's again at equilibrium, times 100, we know from last time that means we're going to have this, percent ionization is going to equal 10 raised to the negative 3.26, 10 to the negative pH, over the original 0 0.020 times 100. So we're going to get percent ionization at 2.7% ionized. All right. 
You should definitely never get any of these questions wrong. It's pretty easy. It applies what we learned last time um, into this. Now, take a look at niacin. It has a like a benzene ring with a nitrogen. Remember, this is an alternating double bond. Alternating double bond. That's what the circle is. All right, so it has a lot of resonance. All right, oops, resonance. Okay, uh, the niacin, uh, vitamin B3 is a water-soluble vitamin, essential nutrient, found in food as meat, wheat germ, dairy, and yeast. All right, uh, niacin de deficiency leads to pellagra, a condition whose symptoms include skin lesions and mental confusion and weakness. All right, so now the other part of the question was the KA. Holy crap. So another green paper uh, equation that we need to use. Um, how do we do this? So we're just writing a basic equation. HS plus the conjugate base. So it really doesn't matter what this is, right? Um, it doesn't matter what the formula is. We're not starting with a particular formula. We're worried about this thing right here, right? And that's, that's pretty important to, to what we're looking at. Let me just move this over to the other side here. All right, so our initial concentration is 0 0.20. Um, we didn't have any of this, and we didn't have any of this because it was 0.20. Um, we're going to lose x. Uh, we're going to gain x. We don't really know anything else. So we're going to gain x on this side. All right, now we're going to have 0. Point, oops, I made, I made a boo-boo. That's a 0 0.020. Where... Where are you all when I need you? All right, we're going to have X, and we're going to have X here. All right. Um, so we have a given X is going to equal H plus concentration, all right, which equals 10 to the negative 3.26. All right, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make a drink. That's where I'm trying to get to that answer. Hopefully I get it right. All right, 5.5 .5 times 10 to the negative fourth. Molar, that's a four. Molar, so an equal equilibrium uh, line is going to become this. All right, at equilibrium, we're going to have zero point zero one nine four five. How did I get that? I hit zero point zero two zero minus five point five times ten to the negative fourth. Okay, so I got that. This is going to be 5 point, oops, the whole page move, sorry. I guess it's because I have my other finger on it. One second. Uh, let me undo that. Where does that go? One second. There we go. Um, so this is equilibrium. So I have 5.45 times 10 to the, damn it, let's see here, 5.5 times 10 to the negative fourth, and 5.5 .5 times 10 to the negative fourth. So this is at equilibrium, all right? This is equilibrium concentration. All right, so then Ka, which we already did the Ka expression for, is going to be 5.5 .5 times 10 to the negative fourth, squared, because it's products over reactants, over 0 0.01945. That gives me my wonderful 1.6 times 10 to the negative fifth. Oh my gosh, I got it right. What a miracle. All right. No pun intended miracle. All right, moving on. Sorry for all my little uh, mistakes. If the Ka for niacin... Uh, is 1.6 find the zero point find the pH of 0 0.010 uh, molar of niacin so I left the equation the same way my initial in this case is going to be 0 0.010 again I don't have any of this we're going to talk about ones that actually start with some of that stuff uh, we're just not there yet so again on this case I'm going to lose x I'm going to gain x I'm going to gain x, and at equilibrium, I have 0 0.010 minus x, 
plus x, plus x, or just x, whatever you want to do. So that, that makes it pretty simple. I'm going to do products over reactants. So I got my value, which I just calculated, 1.6 times 10 to the negative fifth equals x squared over 0 0.010 minus x. All right. You could use the quadratic equation to solve for it, um, and you're going to get uh, 3.92 times 10 to the negative fourth molar. Um, now I have to take the negative log of that, um, right? Negative log of my H plus is going to equal, give me one second, this is a negative four. 3.41 is my pH. Now in a different video, um, I'm going to show you another thing. Now, the shortcut, you can use a shortcut. Here we go. We're talking about this. I'm going to show you how to program your calculator in another video. Um, if the power of k is negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, etc. So let's take a look at the shortcut. All right, let's take a look. So again, we have exactly the same thing, and this is what I was alluding to in class. So I have 0 0.010. I have zero, I have zero, I'm going to lose my x, I'm going to gain x, gain x, 0 0.010 minus x, x, x. So I get 1.6 times 10 to the negative fifth is going to equal x squared over 0 0.010 minus x. Now we talked about this, that that is never going to be the case. We have to use the quadratic equation on the AP exam. And I just told you if it's negative 4, negative 5, whatever it may be, um, then I can not use that. So let's go ahead and do this. x squared over 0 0.010. When I do that, I solve for my x, this is what you're going to be solving for on AP exam. When I do that, I get 4.00 times 10 to the negative fourth. If I do the negative log of that, of 4.00 times 10 to the negative fourth, I get pH is 3.40. Okay, so that makes the answer basically the same answer as it was before. Uh, that is the answer that you would put on the AP exam that would be acceptable. All right. Okay, next, percent ionization of a weak acid at a given temperature. All right, so you need to kind of know this. Um, so what we have here is we have percent ionization... All right, as it goes up, all right, as it goes up, uh, the percent ionization is going to go up as acid concentration goes up, all right? If my percent ionization goes down, then my acid concentration, uh, I just messed this one up. Uh, let's see here. I messed this up. I said that backwards. That's why you have to think. This is going to go down as acid concentration goes down. Um, as percent ionization goes down, the concentration of the acid goes up. So if you take a look, actually, let me make that blue. Let me make that blue here. This is going to go up. So I got my two blues. As ionization, uh, percent ionization goes down, the concentration of the acid goes up. As percent ionization goes up, the uh, acid concentration is going to go down. All right, so these two go down. Sometimes the less concentrated is the substance, the more active the amount that is present. All right, in the same way, the less concentrated, concentrated the weak acid is, the greater the, uh, the percent ionization. All right, so that leads me to this. So how would we do this problem? So we need to calculate, 
All right, hopefully I can get this. Uh, calculate the percent of hydrofluoric acid molecules ionized in a 0.1 molar solution. All right, so my initial concentration, that's pretty easy. I can always do that. I never, get, I never seem to get that wrong. All right, so I got zero and I got zero. Um, now um, my change is going to be, again, minus x plus x plus x. So if I look at this, I got 0 0.10 minus x, x, and I have x. So at this point, I'm going to put it into my equation using my Ka. 6.8 times 10 to the negative fourth equals x squared over 0 0.10 minus x. Um, I'm going to get rid of my x. I don't need that. Um, so if I get this, I'm going to get x equals my H plus concentration, which is 8.25 times 10 to the negative... third molar. All right, x to the negative third molar. All right, so that's what I have there, um, but it's not asking that. It's asking for calculate the percent ionization. So again, percent ionized is going to be concentration of H plus at equilibrium over the concentration of the acid original. And that is 8.25 times 10 to the negative third over 0 0.10. And that's going to give me 8.3%. If I put that in the quadratic, I got 7.9%. This is the accepted answer on AP. Um, you're not going to have time to do this. All right, you're not going to have time to do that. It, it's all good and well that you're trying it now and using that. It doesn't work. Again, it's a negative 4, so you can't really put in the quadratic. AP will never require for you to do a quadratic. All right, last slide for this, I think. Uh, so let's calculate the percent of HF molecules ionized in a 0 0.01 molar solution of hydrofluoric acid. All right, so now we're going to get a little bit quicker on this. So we have 0 0.010 minus x, x and x. So I have 6.8 times 10 to the negative fourth equals x squared over 0 0.10, 0 0.010. My x is in the way. Uh, over 0 0.010 minus x. This is the x we're going to eliminate. All right, that was the x we're going to eliminate. So we get an H plus concentration. Two point six one times ten to the negative third molar. All right. Now, based on our rule, we technically can't really use. Uh, the shortcut, but we are because uh, it started at 10 to the negative 4. All right, so it started at 10 to the negative 4 percent. And they're always going to start like that. All right, ionization equals H plus at equilibrium over acid concentration original. All right, gives me 2.61 times 10 to the negative third over 0 0.010 and I get and don't forget times 100 I don't know if I did that last time times 100 you should know that is 26 percent now without uh, the shortcut with use quadratic you're going to get uh, 23%. So we got to talk about polyprotic acids. Polyprotic acids like sulfurous acid, sulfuric acid, phosphoric acid, phosphorus acid. 
They have more than one ionizable H. You only lose one at a time. Right? You can't just lose both H's. It's never going to be 2H plus plus SO3, 2 minus. You have to lose one at a time. And each one of those gives you a different Ka value. Right? So when I do that, um, the first one, uh, where I have sulfuric acid, I'm going to lose the H and it can go back and forth because, well, sulfuric acid is strong acid, so we'll, we'll get back to that later. But um, for this one, I think I said sulfuric. Uh, but phosphoric, phosphorus, etc. Um, are going to be that. My Ka value is 1.7 times 10 to the negative second. Now, if I have to do it again, I have to take this part and I have to bring it down here. HSO3 minus, right, and that's going to be aqueous, right, sorry. Um, now I'm going to go ahead, there's my double arrow, it's terrible. I'm going to have my second H plus, and this time I'm going to create my sulfite ion. Now what happens to my Ka? My Ka2 is going to be uh, 6.4 times 10 to the negative 8th. All right, 6.4 times 10 to the negative 8th. All right, so it's harder to remove additional, harder... additional H pluses so Ka values go down they go down with each H plus removed Right? Usually Ka2 is at least a thousand times smaller than Ka1. In such cases, one can calculate the H plus and pH based only on K1. Ignore the K2 and pretend you have a monoprotic. If you do that, you're not going to get hung up. You're not going to get stuck on any of the problem solving that you need to do. Um, sorry, I should be a little neater with this, but I'm trying my best to, to make it neat. Okay. So let's go ahead and do one problem. We have carbonic acid, which we know is a weak acid. All right, It's not one of our seven that we had to memorize. Um, so we have this little equation here. Carbonic acid is going to lose one hydrogen and become, uh, that's a bicarbonate over here. This is bicarbonate uh, or hydrogen carbonate, however you want to say it. So at equilibrium, we're going to have 0 0.0037 minus x. Our H plus and our carbonate, uh, bicarbonate are going to be X and X. So we're going to get, and we have to use our Ka. Oh, they gave us two Ka's. Great. Uh, 4.3 times 10 to the negative 7th equals X squared over 0 0.0037 minus X. All right. When we do that, we get X equals H plus, which is going to be 3.97 times 10 to the negative fifth molar. All right. That is the negative log of that concentration. 3.97 times 10 to the negative fifth gives me a pH. Remember, pH equals this. Gives me a 4.40. All right. Um, now, if you did it with the shortcut, okay, you'd have 4.37 times 10 to the negative 7th equals x squared over 0 0.0037. Great. Uh, when you do that, this x plus, and this is why I wanted to make sure you saw this, I don't want you to be like, oh, I did this calculation and I got 3.97. Gives me 3.99 times 10 to the negative 7th. Uh, excuse me, negative 5th. Let me recalculate that. Negative 5th uh, molar. All right, negative 5th molar. The, the pH, remember, equals negative log of 
the concentration, 3.9, the H plus concentration, times 10 to the negative fifth, and that's going to give me, oh, it's crazy, pH equals 4.40, exactly the same. All right, so this is where we're starting to see this, and, and you would know it's exactly the same. How do you know it's exactly the same? Look at this is a minus 7 here. All right, that's a very, very low value. It's tiny. So the smaller it is, the closer that these two are going to stay to the same value. Okay? All right. Um, now let's just say that we wanted to see uh, what happened uh, after the first ionization. And you get to see my, my little picture here. Uh, this is what we think is uh, the joker. All right, so this is crazy. So we're going to do 3.97 times 10 to the negative fifth minus, all right, let's go ahead and add Y in there. All right, why would we make it Y? It's a little bit different making it the Y uh, just because it's a new ionization. All right, so we're going to take this 3.97 times 10 to the negative fifth plus y and then this is going to be y alright so we're, we're taking that um, and that gives us a little bit of funky chicken here 5.6 times 10 to the negative 11th super small value 3.97 times 10 to the negative fifth plus y times y over 3.97 times 10 to the negative fifth minus y. All right. So when we do all that, that wonderful stuff, we're gonna get uh, we're gonna get this thing: 5.6 times 10 to the negative 11th equals 3.97 times 10 to the negative fifth y plus y squared over 3.97 times 10 to the negative fifth minus y. So my y is, yeah, like this. Uh, additional h plus. Is 5.6 times 10 to the negative 11th molar. That is totally negligible. It doesn't do jack squat to anything. So this is going to remain 4.40. So again, just to reiterate, the first uh, dissociation that you use for a weak acid is going to be your answer and the concentration. The additional H plus is going to do nothing uh, to your uh, pH.